All right, we're back in time. Actually, hang on. We should go straight to the in-game screen, but we're going to come back for a second because, of course, got to advertise that it's the Corsair Cup, guys. This wouldn't be possible without them. I hope you've enjoyed the games so far. We are now getting into the round of eight for Bly vs. Mana. And, of course, we got more games where that came from. Spawning in the bottom left side of Dusk Towers, though. It's going to be the Blue Zerg. It's going to be Bly. On fire. In top right, as the Red Protoss, he is Liquid Mana. Now, I really like this matchup, not just because, like, oh, it's some popular people, and they are. Shoutouts to both of them. But it is two players who have been playing really well in a lot of our stuff recently. Bly, unfortunately, did have a bad showing versus Euthermal in the best of, uh, like, 11 or whatever that was, where he took Scarlet Spot. But aside from that, I mean, Bly has been winning a lot of our cups and placing highly in a lot of them, and uh, just all around great. Mana, though, mm -hmm. is interesting because, like, he won't play in everything. But it'll show up to like take a season one, finish the second place. Shows up to like a Matcharino Cup, wins it no problem. Like Mana is actually my favorite, I think, between the two of them in this series. I would agree. Uh, sometimes though, Mana does look like I don't know, is it gonna off day or something like that? But like PVZ can be like almost a little bit of uh, well, I guess 50-50, <laughs> which yeah. is I guess the win rate of it, but. Um, where it just it looks like he's a little bit off, and it is, seems to be his weak point. But we'll see what he can do against Bly. I imagine they play each other very, very often. This is actually already the round of eight match, by the way. Yep. So still like a little bit too early. They're not in the money yet, which kind of sucks having two players like this uh, not in the money. But uh, that this bracket advanced way faster than the well, other one we were casting. Well, absolutely. But I'm also really curious, just kind of going back in the money, like. Um... We were working on something, we are working with Corsair to make many great things happen, guys. For those who don't know the prize for these cups, which is awesome, it's 100 bucks a week, $60 to first place, $20 to second, and 10 to third and fourth. We originally had that be a lot more weighted to first and second only, but people have been really enjoying the fourth place finishing, so we've been having no problem with that. Um, but man, oh man, I really want to start making bigger and better things happen, guys. So the more you that tune in and watch, the more you that check out the sponsor links down below for Corsair, the higher the chance we get to speed that up. because. The point of it is there's bigger and better things coming eventually. The unfortunate side, though, is it's going to take long, depending on sales and click-throughs and blah, blah, blah. The boring stuff when it comes to sponsorships. But uh, do make sure to check out the gear down below. Zyngram and I use their stuff, and I can tell you it's it's all great. There's nothing. I have no negative things to say, but I only have really positive things to say about the headset. We'll get into that later. Uh, scouting for Mana actually pretty important, as he does just now confirm there's no actual natural base taken. Bly took his second base over here at the third location. Mm -hmm. He didn't scout much else that was like totally suspicious though, so he might know that the third could still be on its way, right? And, and it was. It's actually going down now. It's still a little bit worrying. Uh, Stargate will get him that secondary scout though, so we don't have to worry about, about it for too long. We'll see what comes out of here, Oracle or Phoenix. Oh, I'm like 99% sure we gave Naz a shout out, but maybe he didn't hear it. So just again, thank you kindly for that 26 month reset, dude. It's a long time to be subbed to the channel, and we definitely appreciate it. I did during the engagement, but we didn't hear. Well, there you go. It it's bad, man. It's Zombiego's fault. Time to join Team Rifkin. How is it my fault? Because you chose a port. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, suck it. Anyway. You know what? Actually, so this is this is gonna go childish for a second here. I will say it wasn't until maybe I was sixteen or seventeen I understood what the phrase "suck it" meant. I just always knew huh. it as like a, a as something you would say to, to somebody else in like a mean sort of fashion, right? Like, I had no idea the actual context of like what it meant for so long. I'm so embarrassed by that. <laughs> I feel like when you get to a, like to be an adult, you realize that it's. You know, I guess the the worst form of what you can think of, but honestly, it was just like for when we were a kid, just like suck something really gross, right? Like so suck on a frog or something like that. That's kind of what I I was like along the lines of, but uh, yeah, I'm like <laughs> I feel like part of me at one point in my life I was like the sexually oblivious female meme, you know that <laughs> the gross like oh. huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, Gets, uh, gets canceled, but another really two cases for Bly. I'm actually more concerned. Now, Mana's got to be thinking, like, oh, wow, Bly didn't actually attack me until, like, four and a half minutes. Something must be up, right? Because that's not <laughs> what Bly normally does. But Bly, you know, we talked about earlier, he's the type of guy to go for things like Nighty's Rooms. He's the type of guy to go for Mutas and still invest in Ground Army beneath it. Like, 
that's I think what is one of his greatest strengths, but also makes him very difficult to play against. He's very volatile, but once he picks a strategy, he'll stick to it, good or bad. And that's Bly's mm. like weakness, I guess. Uh, or strength, I don't know. It's double-edged sword. Right, it's, uh, it's, it depends on, I guess, his opponents a lot of the time to make that a strength or a weakness. Yeah. So this Phoenix for us is actually pretty good. Um, just kind of comboing pickups and, and, you know, overlord kills and drone kills and whatnot. Uh, and still keeping all of them alive, although one of them almost did die. And that's, that's really nice harassment. It's getting that scouting I was talking about. So, yeah, it is a little odd for Bly to not have attacked you yet. Oh, I don't know if that was Focus Fire, but that was lucky for Bly. Um, for Bly not to attack you yet, but it is Dusk Towers, and there's one map he's going to play. Uh, macro it would be this one so we see a fourth base we all see double hydralis den which i do believe is on purpose yes um what's interesting though is to see this double hydralis den one lurker one upgrade but comboed with melee upgrades uh just melee upgrades too i know we've been seeing some other zergs go for double evos and double attack upgrades for ling hydra specifically i don't know if i'll start plus one missile or just focus on other things well I mean, when Bly has, and other Zerg players, excuse me, have done things like this in the past, it usually is because you are looking to hit at that very precise timing with everything. And that mm -hmm. looks to be exactly what he's planning to do here. Now, Mana scouted this, and that was huge. Like, the Phoenix is being over top of the double Hydra Den. That's not a mistake. I think you play like some guy on ladder, you're like, ha this guy wasted all that money. <laughs> but against Bly, now you're fully aware. He's looking to hit you before you have an immortal count. I love the second Robo coming down because he's absolutely going to need it. Production is going to be key. You don't put cannons down for this. You don't build seven extra pylons. You need actual units to fight that lurker army. Yeah. It also helps that Bly put them down like right next to each other and they finish at the exact same time. Anything else, then you probably would be like, ha, you suck. Mana's like suck. rubbing his eyes. He's like, do I need glasses? I've seen double here. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. But you're right. He absolutely needs, like, I mean, everything to go pretty much perfectly. This is going to be a pretty deadly attack. And we do see Bly getting that plus one missile as opposed to any carapace, just like upgrading for maximum damage as soon as possible. Because this isn't, this isn't really an all in, right? Like, he's on four bases and he's going to go up to even 80 drones, but it is going to be a powerful amount of units right on uh, from the get-go, which is, I think, the the worst part. You know, once Mana breaks out of his third base ramp, which is always, like, the toughest thing to do, then it goes in more about, like, you know, back and forth in, in the middle of the map, but first okay. and foremost, don't let him get so, track in the base. You were saying it's not really all-in, and it is kind of late enough and high enough economy with the tech behind it that it's more dedicated than it is all-in, but the bailingness makes me feel like this is do or die. So again, maybe you guys want to classify this as all in, maybe you don't, but if, if Bly's going to be investing that much money into Lurkers and Banelings, he's not going to have money for much else. Hmm. I don't know if Mon is going to be able to scout this Baneling nest, so they might be a complete surprise. I mean, he has all the units that are that are good, you know, he's going to have force fields apparently, he's going to have a couple of Archons, Ooh. but mm. if he doesn't anticipate the Banelings, he might send the charge lots forward first, and that could be a problem. Mana's only got two probes, and they are vastly out of position. Bly doesn't have lurkers yet, but if he did, that would actually be great to snipe oh. off uh, said units. Back on the other side of the map, the warp prism is really, really low. Not going to die, so big warp and finishes up. Drone's going to die in that middle line. Charge is finished for these zealots. It looks like Bly will hold this, but not without taking some losses, of course. Yeah, charge us will do well against the Ling Hydra reinforcements, actually. So, <laughs> um, As long as the warp prism lives, that's something that Bly always has to think about. I do believe he meant observers when he oh. said probes. And yes. he only has one observer now. This one was picked off. My bad. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that was actually really confusing. I was like, probes for like proxy pylons? or, um, But this is an absolute issue. Only having one observer now, and of course it's on top of the army, could easily be picked off. And Zergs are always bringing overseers forward yep. now. I, I, once upon a time, we almost never saw that happen, but now it's almost like a consistent part of the strategy to specifically pick off the observers because you know your opponent's been chronoing out double immortals. They're not going to have that many observers. You pick off the one or two that they're on play. Boom, you got it. Now, it's really not a lot of lurkers. I mean, these are really, what, the first two lurkers coming into play right now? Mm -hmm. For the timing at which Bly insisted on this attack, I'm wondering if this was delayed because he knows it got scouted. Yeah, that might be the case. It also might be that the Hydras are doing a decent enough job containing Mana in the first place that he didn't really worry about getting a high Lurker count. Because, as I was saying, like, you know, it is about busting out of this third ramp most of the time. That's always, like, the, the problematic problem of this, this matchup is Protoss going down this ramp into Lurkers or a Hydra Concave. But after that's done, 
then it's more about the middle of the map. And I guess Bly is kind of playing it safe in that regard. So not over dedicating with the Hydras. He's going to pull back. Maybe now make a lot of lurkers to buy time for Broodlords, well, apparently. Or Spinecrawlers. Uh, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess he's going to save all of that bank for those brood lords, and that's why it just so simply been like, yeah, he just changed his mind. I I, I agree, like double hydralis den. It's usually something that's like, I want to hit a very swift timing, but he never really did. Well, Mana's a bit wise to this. Bly is perhaps the most brood lord brood lord favoring player in the game sometimes, and while Mana has not scouted, he's got a probably decent idea. Mm -hmm. Now the income graph, by the way, I just want to point out. It's painted blue. There's like very little red on this whatsoever. So Bly <laughs> certainly had the money game going for a while. He had that sort of, we'll call it a contain in air quotes, the fourth base finally just now finishing up for mana or going down even. But this army is actually nothing to ignore. The disruptors are huge. The immortal count's mm. massive. There's archons in this, so it's not something you can surround with zerglings even. I, I was quickly checking what Mana has seen to know to get Tempest. It might be just the pace of the game, like, oh, he didn't all in, and he didn't even really attack me, so he must be he, going for a hive. He never ever saw the Spire, so yeah, yeah. It, it's just really sick game since on Mana. Plus, you know what, Lurkers? Tempest, a couple of them wouldn't even be that I bad think... anyways. But the fact that he's going for double yeah. Stargates really gives this away. Yeah, he also scouted the Spinecrawler wall, like a little, like a tiny bit ago, so maybe all that right. was another hint for it. Uh, you don't usually add this on unless it's rude words. Yeah, he's like in a way calling Bly's bluff, but it's actually not a bluff, it's a real thing. The mothership starts up behind this as well. We're going to see this game go on a little bit further. Uh, War Prism's not going to find the damage that it wants, unfortunately. Oh. It just dies, get wrecked. Uh, Mana is actually going for a mothership right off the bat. I mean, it really has gone to this point where, you know, they're. They're both kind of okay with leaving each other alone. Neither one of them wants to overdedicate. Bly overdedicates without broodlords. His broodlords are left undefended. Mana oh. overdedicates, and he's not ready for the broodlords. We all know how that goes. So they're both just going to extreme late game. Look at this. This is the leftover tales of the Zelnaga guys. Because the mothership core is not transforming or building. It's morphing. Like some sort of what? zerg. What? Oh, yeah. I guess I've never really noticed that. Neither have I. I thought I just... <laughs> Where's the useless facts of Fear Dragon? <laughs> Yeah. Because I wonder what happens to the Archons, right? Because I've, I've made jokes about saying merging instead of, like, morphing before, right? I wonder if they actually are classified as, like, morphing in. I will try and look for High Templars hugging. There you go. <laughs> See <laughs> Give, called. Giving each other adult hugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Disruptor's going to find the Lurkers. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple of them do live, but, man, getting the hit on the links of the Bane is probably the worst part of it. Unfortunately, the only way to deal with the mothership is going to be through those Hydras. There's no Corruptors left over. It's all Broodlords. Yeah, Hydras come in, though. Yeah, They're going to focus on the Tempest instead talks. of the mothership. This isn't going to work for Bly. No, uh, no, no. He's, he's, back. he's bleeding out so many of these Broodlords. I mean, okay, oh, Bly, you had a big warping. bank. Ooh. Uh, he's not even going to get the base for this. This is devastating. Oh, wait, well, maybe I'll get the base? Okay, okay, he does get the base. But still, even it then, goes... that's not really that worth it. If that wasn't a slow warping of charge lots, I think all the hydras would have died, and then he would not have gotten that nexus. That was actually really... It's always so painful to look at a slow warping. As you can see, these charges, they have plus three. They get on top of the hydras real quick. And they the die. Hydras, they can't I mean, even really help that much. It's like three chops, and the hydralis goes down. They don't have yeah. much health. The Tempest also, like, five shots, something a Broodlord. It's, he's even going for any Impulse Crystals, so he wants to be able to dance in the sky. And we know, again, with Nurtio being one of the best Zerg players we've ever seen in the foreign scene, combined with the fact that we've seen him lose to this turtle slash air golden armada to people like Maro, I'm not feeling so hot for Bly. Like, if Bly's gonna actually have to deal with this massive army out of mana, uh, we just saw how badly that got stomped, mm -hmm. and that was all of his money. Now Bly doesn't yeah. have all that money, he doesn't have a giant bank, I don't think he can actually take this army on. I agree. I, I'm giving this game the mana, but we'll see what the next fight looks like, because Bly might have really hoped to have catch, caught him either with no Tempests, ideally, like, Bl Mana's like, oh my god, I can't believe he have Broodlords oh. already, or with a limited amount that he could actually win. So this is, I, I kind of like where this is going. Unfortunately, it's going to get caught. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. We Even the Archon's getting the action. That means all the Uber's going to go down. <laughs> Luckily, it's Lings, and this is not the worst kind of supply to lose, but that was a significant amount of units. Yeah. Now, Bly might and be that thinking... Base. You know what? Bly's oh. probably thinking base trade at this base point. Trade. It's probably his only option. Oh, there we go. They're merging. Oh! So these merge. But the mothership, the mothership morphs. <gasps> it's morphing time. Oh, the corruptors are getting Wrecked. spotted by the Zircons. 
he, I don't know why you would take that fight underneath the Archons like that. Unfortunately for Bly, the recall on top of the Archons, on top of everything, there just went poorly. Now he's on a 48 supply. He doesn't have this base anymore. His money is gone. He's like a rich kid who spent it all frivolously. Yeah, like $50,000 right down the drain, right? $50,000 trolling Twitch streamers down the drain. <laughs> uh, that was a beautiful engagement, and Bly is actually dead here. I don't see what you do. Uh, mass on Hydra's hope that charge shots don't become a problem. Nah, I think really I think I, I liked Bly's ideas for this map. Unfortunately, getting scouted with the double hydrogen timing, getting completely shut down with that first Broodlord push. I mean, again, Mana never even scouted the Spire, but he was so well prepared for it. And a lot of this has to do with maybe pacing of the game, but the fact that Mana is an experienced veteran who's played late game PvZ enough times to know where that was going. Yeah, certainly on Dusk Towers often enough. Now, having a little bit of trouble ending the game as quickly as, as possible. And Bly is that type of player that would be like, No, I can do this. I can I can counterattack. I can Nidus Worm. I'm going to win. But he uh, he, he isn't. Uh, well, it's funny because you, you got games where like Suppy just taps out. And then you got games like Bly who will never <laughs> tap out. Like two very different contrasts to the scale. Of. Not that it's like a bad thing either. Because, I mean, let's be honest. We've seen, I'd say, a good amount of games thrown from one positions again yeah referencing earlier today for example but still like mana has not won this game yet and that's that's all that Bly needs to know mm. well mm. I mean very careful how he pushes in here he could just use the tempest all day long to, to poke and then pick off a couple of units and that'd be fine for the ground army never have to engage I know he has an observer in here in fact he has two uh, I guess those are charge lots going through the middle of the map. Yeah, cleaning up the spine crawlers or whatever hydras try and go reinforce it. Oh, uh, these abducts are pretty nice, actually. If you could have gotten a few more earlier, maybe that would have been better for the initial army fight. Unfortunately, though, two or three tempests now don't mean a lot. The immortal army underneath this is still strong. He just lost all the hydras trying to kill this couple of units. He's bleeding out slowly to this. Mm, bye bye, Bruce. Rip. Rip. Oh, uh, one. Well, they barely get uh, away, but. To where? Where are they escaping to? Yeah. <laughs> to, to what army will will save them? That disruptor hit was the nail in the coffin. It's got to be. Bly's got 40 army supply left. Every time he abducts something, he's actually getting killed. <laughs> yeah, there's no point abducting anything. Thanks to Traylene for the 13 month resub in this game. Woohoo! It is the end. Yeah, GG. GG. All right, map number one gonna go to Mana. Very nicely done. Very, very, I will say perfect play, to be honest. Like, there are not many protos I think you can put up against Bly and make it look that easy. Just straight up. I I agree. There wasn't really, I mean, some of that was on Bly, right? He never actually pushed in or, or made Mana, like, forced Mana to make mistakes. He was just hoping that Mana wouldn't anticipate high tech, which uh, I know some of the protosses wouldn't, but Mana did, so it looks like a perfect game. It was a good game indeed. Uh, we're going to go to small break. We'll get game number two set up, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. All right, guys. We're back just in time for that countdown. You probably heard the beeps as we get to King Sejong Station here in the round of eight for the Corsair Cup. Uh, before the stream today, I tried the new co-op mode mutation, and holy hell, it was hard. Mm. So... We're kind of getting through this fast. If we've got time at the end of stream, I vote you try and help me beat it. Because it was tough, man. Oh. All right. Now, in fairness, I did, of course, get stuck with a guy who had, like, no levels and whatever. But I just feel like you probably don't need a lot of the mastery points. You just need a head on your shoulders. I was going to say, I'm not very leveled either. No, but you've got level 15 fours in or whatever. So, right? Level 14? Really? That high? I don't know. Are you maxed out of fours in? No, I think I'm only level 10. Then it's going to be really awesome and challenging for us is what it's going to be. <laughs> I'm going to take this quiz on Twitter that I just saw, which is which Overwatch hero are you? <laughs> okay, well, while you find out how you're, in what ways you're Tracer, I'm going to introduce the players. In the top left side of the map, he's down one point here in the best of three. It's going to be the Blue Zerg player, Bly. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, he is Liquid Mana. Damn, I'm Torbjorn. Well, you introduced the red player. It makes a lot of sense, obviously. No, I want to be Hanzo. Why? 
So you kill your brother? Oh, I guess that would actually make a lot of sense. <laughs> He's cooking again! <laughs> He's burning something! I'm so done! Rugu, I can't take you, I go! Oh no, exactly where to shoot it. Just like diagonal right to the kitchen. <laughs> actually, did you see that bullshit with Hanzo's uh, hitbox on the arrows they, they revealed recently? Hanzo's hitbox on the arrows? No! So there's a gif where basically Hanzo's arrow is seriously way bigger than the actual arrow. So you can actually headshot somebody by shooting like way over the right shoulder type thing. Oh, well that makes sense. All those times that you're like, I definitely was behind that corner. How the right? hell did he shoot me? Exactly. Like, <laughs> I was, I actually saw the one about the Lucio skin headshot. It was um, Lucio and, and some, maybe Mercy, I want to say their hitboxes for their specific skins are like wildly out of proportion compared to their regular skins, <laughs> which is an issue that like skins are always like you know Blizzard's always like we're supposed afraid to be just cosmetic. Yeah. yeah, so they they messed up with that one. Uh, well, we got two 13 month resubs. Brothers coming back to back. Higgins underscore as well as Dumbish Armad. Thank you guys so much for resubbing. Yay! All right, so Bly chose King Sejong Station. This has been a map. I mean, talked about well enough, I suppose, by us. On base trade TV, it is still one of the new maps, but its uh, problem is that it is still a little bit difficult to get that third base as a Protoss. Oh, there's Arthas. And as such, we still see a lot of Protosses kind of doing something to make up for that, either going for an attack like Mana was probably planning on doing before he got scouted by the sling, uh, or just holding off maybe like an extra minute to get that third base to really like properly secure it because you know they make 20 lings and. It's a little bit far out. No, well, overcharge is ready. Really hard. That was a pretty big scout with the Ling. Seeing the Twilight Council come down this early, you know that Blink used to be popular back in the day. You know Adept all ins are very deadly nowadays. The only thing that really would have sealed the deal is if you scouted this in conjunction with like a Robo. But the fact that it is just gateways, now I'm starting to understand why this probe was left up here. And a yeah. proxy could be very dangerous. Who needs a Robo with a warp prism if you can just warp in next door? Yeah, the um, I was curious, you know, like Mana having been scouted like that, he could have just been like, okay, I'm not gonna go for like the huge all in anymore. I'm gonna go for like a four gate adept attack, which okay, he might with a proxy one gateway. Did you just but... cheat your way to being Hanzo? By the way, I see this no, tweet. No, 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 no. I'm Hanzo. So... Check which hashtag Overwatch you're here. You are here. No. So what happened was it's actually a quiz, first of all, which is very disappointing. <laughs> You click on it and it like takes you to your Twitter after you log in with it and I was like well They didn't give me anything so I did it again So first it gave me Hanzo and then it gave me Torbjorn and then that's why I was like no, I don't want to be Torbjorn <laughs> So I deleted that tweet. All right. Well time to see as I ruin my own Twitter Warpin's coming in So I got to do this quickly before the battle starts Yeah, This is actually the four gate. Oh, no cast your advertise so spam on stream. You'll never believe what happens next Yeah <laughs> Caster's an uh, Overwatch hero, and then... Yeah, first of all, Neve is Terran, so it makes sense. Okay, he was, anyways. And second of all, these Baneling defenses against the Adept attacks just have been doing splits, or the amount of Adept you can warp in with each warp. And this is only for... ...with very little to no resistance. 25 drones go down, he's still transferring around, he's still warping in more Adepts, and, of course, even taking a... Th right? Like, you hide around the corners, you get away from the Adepts, like... No, you chase the Adepts. No way, man. Not with drones. You gotta book it. Well, no, not you with drones. You gotta get the hell out of there. You're gonna have a bad time if you chase that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, my bad Overwatch memeing aside, Bly will sadly lose and unfortunately we get knocked out of the tournament. But now Mana will advance to the semifinals where he'll have to wait a little bit for an opponent in either Guru, Penguin, or Keen. In fact, if, if Penguin hasn't started... Ooh, he has started. Okay, never mind. I see that'd be one to catch. But mini raids in the top half, maybe fighting Damaga. We got Fear of Protoss waiting for Insane or Hino. That series still going on might be better than we would have expected. I don't know. But we are going to go to a small break while we figure out what's going on next. So thank you guys for joining us for the Corsair Cup. And again, if you really want to check out the sponsors and support them and support us, even if you don't want to buy the gear, check out the links down below the Twitch page. If you missed it, the announcement was cleaned up last week. It looks really nice now and a lot less cluttered. 